Howdy, y'all. Joe Hills here, recording as I was due in Nashville, Tennessee, and I've had a crazy busy weekend. You can hear more about my terrible exploits this weekend at my last Hermitcraft video, in which I work on the intersection with I Am Spoon and talk about how everything went incredibly insanely. But anyway, before I left for the weekend, I hurriedly set up this parallel universe thing using a Mistcraft book and these quarries, so that way when I came home I'd have a whole bunch of stuff ready to go. Unfortunately, I didn't set it up all entirely the best way, so a lot of it's cobblestone. But you know what? Not all of it's cobblestone. Some of it is like, you know, redstone or other things that are not terrible. Look at this. We got some coal. You know, that's helpful. And, uh, oh, I should probably just use this button. And see, look. Look at how much coal I got. As well as a bunch of iron or tin, other stuff. So what I've been doing as well is slowly generating energy with some of these solar panels and these generators to fuel my matter fabricator, which is a ever-running work in progress. I knew I wasn't going to be able to replenish the nuclear reactor while I was gone, so I set it up on solar panels, so it would at least be running at a partial capacity. What I want to do this episode, though, is now that I am back from the weekend, I want to set up this third quarry over here to work properly. Ooh. I want to go grab all the cool ores out of the walls of these quarries, and I want to move the nuclear reactor over here. We'll see whether or not I get all of these things done, but I think in the very least I can get some of them done. Now, there's no pipe that runs... Oh, there's supposed to be an engine here. I haven't gotten it moved over yet. So the ore that comes from the third quarry will run into here, which unfortunately these filters changed color when I added this new brick here, or new pipe. So I actually need to change them all. So let's see, I'm going to need gravel, dirt, flint, and cobble to go... Which direction? Which direction do I want to go? I want them all... Wait, what's the pipe that runs to my recyclers? Oh no, I broke the pipe that runs to my recyclers because I'm an incredibly poor planner. A ooh. So that's what happened. The reason all of the stuff that would go to the recyclers comes out gray is because gray used to run to the top of there. Okay. So already we are learning from our mistakes and we are picking up the pieces. I'm just going to do my best to reassess how I might better do every part of this. I guess what I could do is have my diamond pipe that feeds stuff to the recyclers be right here instead. So we are just going to grab us some of... No, there's no diamond pipe in there. Dang it. Really? I guess I could technically... Oh, I can't steal that one because that's a... It links those two. Really, guys? Am I out? Ugh. Why is nothing ever easy? Nothing's ever simple in this game, you know? Nothing ever goes my way. So here's a bunch of the other stuff that I got out of there. Tons of bauxite. Five iridium, which is not enough to build another solar panel yet. But, oh, dang it, I have no glass. That is indeed the case here. So we are going to quickly hop on back to my base. Grab us a piece of glass out of somewhere. Any glass over here? Pains. It pains me how many pains there are. And how few of everything else. Dang it, really guys? What a frustrating situation for me. What a frustrating situation indeed. How could I not have glass? Where did it... Oh. I turned it all into tanks. I turned it into tanks for my creosote oil. However... Oh, well, that that did nothing. That was the worst idea. Apparently, this thing needs to be charged to actually cut the rocks. Okay, so, so new plan. New plan is to go to the bat box and put this in. Charge it enough to steal a piece of glass. Because, you know, nothing could go worse than it's been going already. That'll slowly replenish or deplete, whatever. I, I stole a bunch of the solar panels out of here to move them to the quarry because I knew it would be open 24-7 while I was gone. No, don't want to break that topper. But yeah, so on my trip, uh, we went and got a bunch of books signed for Pitfalls and Penguins. I don't know if you guys have heard me talk about it much before, but that is the funnier version of D&D. Dang it, now I'm at Dingletron Industries. I hate how these books resort themselves. This is Top Mass's base, and it's a work in progress, and I'm not wearing my jetpack. 
So every part of this is like the opposite of what I would like. Go back to Joe Quora 3 over here. Woo! Quora 3. Oh good, it's got the, the screwed up things for all of the quarries now. Wonderful. Okay, next step in this process is to take these two diamonds, put a piece of glass on either side, boom. Eight diamond transport pipes. And in the process, let's go ahead also and throw some tins, tin cells up in here, and replenish the bauxite dust, because there's no reason this stuff can't all be running in the background. Where's all my bauxite dust? Does it have to be macerated? I, I will macerate more bauxite. I have no trouble with that. That's fine. It's all cool. Okay. Where were we? We had a process here that we were going to spend time expanding on, and that is to put that there. No. Okay, so now I need dirt and stone to... Dirt, stone, flint to go red. So in the very least, we got cobble. Let me see if I can find any dirt in any of these chests. Probably I have some somewhere, okay? Flint. You know what? Seeds and eggs could probably also go into the recycler. I think that, that would be acceptable. So, oak saplings? Yeah, them too. Seedlings? Yeah, them too. Dirt? Yeah, them too. Flint? Uh-huh, them too. Okay, now that we have indeed maintained that all of those things will go this way and a bunch of stuff from over here will keep going into this one making sure that yellow is the catch-all it is indeed I think we can now safely turn back on this which I've used to begin construction of this quarry and so there is our little quarry thing just milling along like it ain't no thing Yep, just digging a trench. Why is there an additional bar here? That's kind of bizarre. Usually the quarry bar would go all the way across, but maybe that's the same glitch that graphically is causing these extra boxes here. So, okay. In the meantime, we can feed a bunch of the extra cobble and whatnot that I collected from the bad quarries that were far, far less well-behaved just straight into these recyclers I have lined up, because, you know, why not? I'm going to need these scrap later anyway. I figured out, or ascertained, for those of you who like the English language. No, not my iron! I figured out that these uh, recyclers, though, they would overflow when they had, um, when they would get the stuff through the topper hoppers, but when they get the pipes, they know better. So, I just need to leave the pipes in there, and then I won't have any troubles. Which is always wonderful, because who needs troubles? I do not. That is not me. Not this guy. No. So we're just going to throw iron ore in there and start getting some of that. Throw more bauxite into here. Extra tins. You know, what could go wrong? Cool. So I'm just going to... I've got a macerator set up here, and I'm just going to start letting this thing run and possibly emptying enough of these chests that we don't have to worry about stuff overflowing because I would really like to be able to let this stuff just go, especially since most of the day tomorrow I'm going to spend actually, like, labeling and mailing books when I'm not at work. And then um, Wednesday night I'm going to this thing at this coffee shop where they tell stories that are supposed to be funny, and uh, you drink coffee, and they also serve, like, wine and beer and stuff. But, you know, you have the option of drinking coffee. And, uh, so, because I'm going to be crazy busy with a bunch of other stuff, I want to have everything set up to just run, so then, at the end of the day, I've got everything I need just all pre-configured and running and set. You know, that'd be pretty fun. Oh, I should put gravel going toward the, um, gravel going toward the red here. So, we are just going to add gravel, like so. That way our gravel blocks will not be, uh, fixing to take up all our space over here either and we do not want to fall off the edge there so this is not the most adventurous episode perhaps you might say but it is one where I'm doing a bunch of stuff that I kind of have to do in order to get the resources I'll need to make the stuff I want later you know you can't just wake up one day and have everything you ever wanted you have to work Day after day after day after day after day after day after day for it. And 
Sometimes, though, you have to do a whole bunch of work up front, so then you can do nothing for several days and still come out ahead. So, I want to come out ahead. I want to wake up and just have so much extra UU matter. These five or six hoppers here running into this, that's going to, you know, that's going to produce some UU matter. There is no question of that. I mean, hopefully my mine here will find some iridium, but just in case it doesn't, I need a solid fallback of, you know, actually creating it uh, to order or to go or whatever. I guess to order. I've got a bunch of generators here kind of complementing my terrible situation with these low-power solar panels. Um, not ideal. I totally recognize that. This is not the way to do this. But it's kind of a passable way to produce a little bit of extra power on the margins. And anything I can do to help out on the margins is better than being, uh, you know, in big trouble across the whole thing. Man, so much space already consumed here. More bauxite dust. We can just even throw that. Oh, wow, that's already overflowing there. Cool. So this is all starting to come together. I think um, one of the next things I want to do is actually move my nuclear reactor over here. And that's probably going to take several trips. I haven't figured out exactly the best way to do that yet. But I'm going to probably just go remove everything and then start hitting it with the wrench. I, I don't really know better. So we'll just assume that that's how you do that. I guess I could burn those. Oh, hey, I have ten extra chests. I should probably, in fact, use them for things. Like storing additional materials. Or materiel. So we will just run over here. Boom, so much stuff. It's so awesome. Like how much these mines can produce when you're not, like, even here. So, great Whoa! Thank you, Jetpack. I would have otherwise met my untimely end. Wonderful. So, this dimension is a combination of plains, forests, and extreme hills, and a flat land using the Mistcraft book generation. Now, the benefit of that is plains and forests are the only two biomes that have bauxite dust in them, which I need to centrifuge to get some of the stuff that I like. And um, then the Extreme Hills biome is the only biome where you get emeralds. And I also need a ton of emeralds. So, you know, can't go wrong there, right? That's that's pretty much a no-brainer. So that is where, or how I pulled this off. And let's see, even more bauxite ore into here. Should probably set up a chest by the centrifuge here of like stuff I need to centrifuge. Just so I have it. Empty cells can go in there. I've got a, uh, a thing over here for stuff that I need to actually just smelt, like this stuff. I haven't moved my smelter over yet. So let's see. Do I have any lead in here? I don't... hopefully not. Yeah, that's going... that's going... silver, there we go. Because lead cannot be macerated, it just gets smelted imme immediately. Not imminently. I guess it could get smelted imminently if that's really what you wanted to do. But you probably don't intend that. That's probably not what you're, you know, going for, per se. Okay, so much stuff. Man, this is like, I've got too many minerals to smelt them all at this point. That's, that's where, that's the point we are at. That's where we live right now, folks. We live in too many mineral land. And it's kind of beautiful. I'm super excited. Plus, there's all these minerals along the walls here that I can just go down and get to. Oh, wait, that's lead. Dang it, that's like the one thing I don't want to put in there. A lot of these are lead. So, lead, 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 lead. Okay, those all get smelted immediately. Silver, monzonite, any of the rest of these, room for them? Okay, whatever. So then we just drop everything else into here. So many ores. Like, I could start making, like, ore blocks to build for, I don't know, my castle or whatever. Apparently, aluminum blocks, things can't spawn on, but I think I've read you that in the Greg Tech computer video. So, you already know that. But, like, yeah, I, I'm just really happy to be able to come down in here. Actually, you know what I should do is not, not do this one, because I think I explored this one earlier off camera. But just come down in here and just look at the walls, you know. 
all sorts of coal, apatiti, uh, copper, more copper, coal, iron, you know, just stuff all over the place here. Silver, I think, I would guess. I dug out some uranium there earlier, so I'd have it. Ooh, double uranium over here. What does it mean? Oh, single uranium over that way, too. I think it means it's time to land and swap out our jet pack for our lap pack here and steal us some uranium to mace rate so we get our double return on the uranium. You Once you start doing nuclear stuff in here, you just cannot get enough uranium. And, okay, so that's all that. Oops. So, yes, don't... Don't forget when you take off your jetpack, kids. There is a lesson to be learned there. I cut out, I think, some diamonds over there off camera before I realized, oh, I should do that on camera, you know, because that's part of the show. Awesome. Okay. So, anyway, we got a pretty good setup here in general, but we need to come back here and actually retrieve... A lot of the remaining materials. Woo! Okay. Like this extra generator. I could be using that. Let's go ahead and get everything out of the reactor, I guess. I don't know how safe it is to leave stuff in the reactor and hope it pops out later. So we're just going to pull it all out and put it in our reactor component chest, which is pretty full. So we'll also put it in this chest, which is pretty full. Okay, part of, point in, part of the point of taking the jetpack off was putting the lap pack on. Failing to do that was just a waste of my time. Okay, great. There's so much room in the reactor when you add this many chambers. I wish these things stacked. I really do. But, okay. So, wow. So much stuff. So little space. Can I fit the rest? I might be able to. But then I'm not going to have room to grab the other stuff I need. Dang it. Well, let's see about that. If I come over here and I grab this reactor component. Okay, so that's one space. Are each of these chambers a separate... Whoa! This is this is the time for the jetpack. Jet jetpack time. Are there any creepers? No. Well, let's get high enough up that we wouldn't have to worry about them anyway. And switch back to our jetpack. Did I leave it in the chest? <sighs> okay, so we're going to have to come back here later for this uranium. Th there's... That's that's an issue. Dang it. Okay, jetpack. Great. Okay, so we come back over here. Knock this one out. This is one of those lovely problem-solving games where you have to do things sequentially, or you're just unhappy forever. Which who wants to be unhappy forever? You know? Not Ziggy. He wants things to be okay, but they're not. Inexplicably. Or explicably, depending on, you know, if you're him. But okay, so we've wiped out that reactor. We can just start grabbing these individual pieces here. I'm probably going to want... Uh, well, I'm actually, I'm certainly going to want the actual reactor core. Oh! Uh-oh. So let's get our jetpack back on. I forgot that I had another one that fell out the bottom there. I'm glad to have retrieved that safely. Okay. So I probably want to fill this in before I get my MFE. Just, you know, for safety's sake. There's, like, no power left in this, is there? Oh, there is. Wow. Okay. Well, we will steal that because there's no point in wasting good power when I need to make, you know, awesome bits of UU matter. We will just let that deplete fully. Okay, one less thing to worry about. Whoops, okay, so I guess I got everything now. Generator, Labatron Crystal, and I can come back and salvage the rest of this later. Oh, I do want to get this um, Red Rock Quarry Reactor. Was that last thing that dropped the reactor linkage? I might have to build a new linkage, so you'll get to see me do that too. Great. So, anyway, don't want to go to Dingletron. Joe's base, no. Spawn Joe Quarry 3. Away! 
So we are safely back here, and oh good, the boxes have moved, and they are still inaccurate and unhelpful. So there's additionally that. Got a bunch of dirt that's just cooking. That's great. Now, I think for my nuclear reactor, I can just set it up. Run in... Oh, I might want to run it into a separate MFE over... Whoa. Over here. So why don't we do that, like so. And... I want that place. Really? Okay, so there's our MFE. And our first reactor chamber can go here. Dang it, that was not our second reactor. What did I place down here? Oh, that's the reactor itself. Not enough energy for lossless wrench operation. Dang it. To the MFE! And let's use a different block. Because if we put our wrench in there, we're in trouble. Okay, great. So, we have placed an extra generator here that we don't want. We have recovered it because we are incredible people. We are so talented in so many ways. We are so gifted, so universally loved. No one could question it. Okay. So now I'm still one glass fiber cable short of linkage and that. Which I will have to go and recover from. Actually, I guess I could recover from here. Because this fiber cable doesn't do anything. Whoops. Okay, great. So that thing will eventually start making power once we get it all hooked up. In the short term, though, no big loss while it handles other things. Okay, um... So, we have the reactor conf... Or, basically, let, let's just dump stuff into it for right now, I guess. That is probably the safest way to store all this stuff, because what else are we going to use it for? Nothing. Let's zip on back to the wonderful Red Rock Canyon. Nope. Ooh, jetpack, jetpack. Ooh, there we go. Red Rock, away! Creeper below. I don't mind because I'm an awesome Joe. Cool. So now if I... I think I can steal the sensor location card, but I don't know if that'll help because it's tied to... Hmm. We'll, we'll have to worry about that later. But I will want to take these panels with me. So we will just steal these. And, whoa. Cool. So I've got the main panel and the extenders and the lever that powers them. I'm going to take a bunch of this glass fiber cable because it's expensive as heck. And I need it. Extra piping. What was I also going to grab? I was going to grab the reactor stuff, wasn't I? Yes, that was it. Cool. So we can just kind of indiscriminately bash at parts of this with our drill because, you know, why not? It's a joyful occasion. And, you know, it's like if you can't swing your drill into the air and, and enjoy yourself, like what, what can you do? I don't know. Fire guns into the air? That's insanely dangerous. Drills are just clearly the better answer here. Grab that other lever. Let's not fall down there. Whew, and there is just so much stuff to grab out of here. Plenty of heat cells, uranium cells, all sorts of stuff. Double uranium cells, double plutonium cells. Whew, man, I'm doing pretty good on many of these counts. I have so much stuff, but so few places to like actually properly apply them. I feel like I'm in this weird point in the game where I have like I have too many things and I don't I don't have enough direction or enough vision for it like 
Yeah, what should I do with all these double plutonium cells? I don't know. Let's put some fans around them or something. Yeah, that sounds like a good plan. Yeah, then let's put things by the fans, you know, to, like, move the heat around. Okay, yeah, sure. That sounds that sounds like you know what you're doing, guy. But it's like, I don't, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. See, we're just, we're just putting fans in here. You know, why not? So then here's another one, and, uh, I don't know. I got a double uranium cell. I can just put on that. It's actually a terrible way to do that. That's probably going to end up with somebody getting killed. You know, like me. I should probably avoid getting killed in this game. That should be one of my primary goals, if not my primary goal, when it comes to nuclear reactors and reactor technology anyway. And I didn't even bring my thermostat over here. Turning a reactor on without bringing your thermostat? That is that is just child's... Um, that, that, is, that is a fool's mistake. But let's see how much power we're putting out at least. Oh, zero EU per tick. Oh, well, that's probably because I don't have everything hooked up to it yet. I might as well store my reactor stuff over here. Drop a bunch of the extra stuff into... You know what, let's throw the LZH condenser in here just in case, so it can, you know, absorb stuff. Man, I feel like my mind is just all over the place today. So, I'm also going to need a, a reactor lever to turn it on. And I'm going to go get the thermostat to make sure that it's not, like, deadly levels of everything. Because, you know, at the point where it's deadly levels of everything, I really need to start worrying. Our little decaying quarry things here are going on. That's fine. We didn't expect them to last forever. We're just going to leave this ecological nightmare of a pit here, you know, until we come back in another episode and rehabilitate the area. Don't worry, I do have plans to rehabilitate the area, but they're not necessarily good ones. So, okay, wait. I was going to bring my thermostat if I could find it. Where would I have left that? That's a really crucial piece of all this. Let's try going back to my base and checking to see if I've left it there, maybe. Here, therma, therma, thermostatic. Here, therma, 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 thermostatic. Dang it. It's like a temperature measurement device. It's, it's super important for making sure your reactors don't overheat. You guys have seen me use it like a million times. Oh, here it is. Thank goodness. I was really worried this video was going to start to drag. So, we are just going to get back to not here. Here. And we are going to... So, the line power is zero. Turn it on. Line power is up to 120. So, that means that's generating power, which means it might also be generating heat. So, get the wrench out of there. Reactor whole heat is zero. Awesome. So that means that we are now putting out between this, putting out 227 power over here and 137 over here. I could actually get the reactor going a little bit hotter now that I've actually, you know, got all more stuff. So we're just going to dump all these extra little reactor heat vents and components and whatnot in there. But. Anyway, so you guys see at least in general where I'm kind of going with this. I don't know if you really want to see me make another quarry. While this stuff runs, I might record some other stuff um, in other areas of the uh, of the map. I'm, I've got a bunch of stuff that Top Mass left me, some B stuff that I've been wanting to get to. I just haven't yet. But I knew I needed to get this at least safely running before I went off on other adventures, having neglected it for the whole weekend. So... Anyway, until next time, y'all, this is Joe Hills from Nashville, Tennessee. Keep adventuring. If you like funny RPG games, don't forget, you can go to pitfallsandpenguins.com now and download a free copy of the PDF of the hilarious new game I wrote, but I did not write funny advertising copy for. It's got elves and orcs and rednecks in it. And, you know, you can play as a penguin scientist and run around and make your own lightning gun chainsaws. Seriously, pitfallsandpenguins.com. You can download the PDF for any price you name, including free, or you can buy the book itself, which is about $25 plus shipping. It's about $5 shipping in the U.S. and a, a little bit more internationally. So, once again, download the PDF any price you want. 
pitfallsandpenguins.com. I worked for years on this project. I'm really proud of it. I'll send you something in the mail. It will show up at your house if you buy it. It's awesome. Anyway, I think I already signed off, so this is just like me outroing you. See, if I if I trod you out, you'd be mad at me. But if I outro you, you're like, oh yeah, that that was pretty good. He should stop talking now anyway, though. And I should go to pitfallsandpenguins.com and go look at this thing. Because, you know, it'd be funny to play as like a penguin ninja or something. I'm not doing well at my altitude control. <laughs>